evening and welcome to Know Your Rights, the show where you hear directly from lawyers who break down the law and explain the rights of citizens on common legal challenges that confront Belizeans on a daily basis. I am your host, Khadija Usher. Tonight, we will be discussing your rights when you come in contact with the police. Whether it is a polite knock on the door or you find yourself on the floor, you need to know your rights. Our guest is Leisha Chung, attorney at Barrow and Company. Good evening and welcome, Leisha. Thank you. Good evening. How how your September go? Good. Good, 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 good. No complaints. No complaints at all. I think one of the biggest feedbacks I've gotten from all the September activities so far is mm -hmm. that the level of policing is pretty high. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of police officers out and in that case, a lot of people are encountering the police. So I think it's very fitting that we actually have this topic in the middle of the yes. September season. So people know what to do and what not to do. Yes, and encountering with the police, I mean, it's a very broad spectrum of many, th many things we can speak about. Mm -hmm. So we want to focus on three key areas, which okay. is your encounter with them on your property at home, okay. when you're in your vehicle mm -hmm. and Y yourself, body searches right. and, and right. things like that. So I'd like you to first talk about when you have the encounter at your house on your property. Um, it's a very touchy subject for a lot of people because yours may not be the same as mine. So you have those situations where people have to basically be defensive because of the approach that they are greeted with. Um, there are those instances where the police, as you in, mentioned in your introduction, where they uh -huh. come knocking on your door, and, your door. and you are open <laughs> to some sort of con conversation. Yes. But then there are those instances when they don't really come as politely as that. You kind of um, rough you up. There are those instances, unfortunately, yes. Um, but what is, I guess, the, the iffy and the more sensitive subject for most persons, where is your warrant? Uh -huh. And I get that a lot. They came to my house and they didn't even show me a warrant. Yes. The um, rights of the police as it relates to the presentation of a warrant um, is necessary when they're searching for anything other than firearms or ammunition. Mm -hmm. um, so if it is that they're acting on suspicion or if they have been informed that okay. there may be firearms on a particular location, Yes. or at a particular location, sorry, then they do not need to have a warrant. And when you, you say inform, mm -hmm. um, can anybody inform the police? Like, I, I have a neighbor and she say, I, I thought I saw my neighbor have these weaponry in her house. Well, um, it, the thing, and it is a very delicate subject for them because yeah. police act on information. Yes. Um, for them to, it's not like they have a lie detector connected and they can say, okay, this person is telling a lie or this is a true statement. They make inquiries of their own and I think acting on reasonable suspicion based on what they can decipher would be a reasonable statement or a reasonable information, then they can decide if they will act on it or not. Yeah, because I think the, the similar incident is usually when you have these bomb threats and I, I reference this because quite recently I live mm -hmm. around St. Martin's era and I wake up the morning and I say, the way to go on, why so much police is exactly. here by a primary exactly. school? So that is the you type know. of situation that the police, and it's not necessarily easy for them, yes. but as you indicated, you woke up to that. Yes. They receive it and they have to act they on have any to possible respond. threat. Right? They and have it to is respond. their duty. That is what they're duty bound to do. So the circumstances that requires a warrant. Can you be more specific? For example, if it is that the police have been asked to gather more information as it relates to a particular crime, okay. um, a non-ammunition, non-firearm type of crime, okay. it would be something like they're, they're working with the immigration department, for example, and yeah. they are of the view that some illegal persons are residing at a location, then they would have to get the necessary information for them to present that for the search to be. So it is anything touching and concerning um, non-firearm and non-ammunition type of searches. What about drugs? Um, there are those instances when they will specify yes. who, what, when, and where. Um, they can be come, it can come with a knock or it can come in the form of a raid. Okay. And in those instances, again, they can and would be able to provide you with the information as it relates to why we are here and the reasons for us being here. Um, normally, there's a lead officer, a person who is a head of the 
the unit the at that point, unit, right? Yes, and yes. they would identify or should I say should identify okay. themselves so that you know who you are speaking to, so that if there are any questions or any issues, you know who to address it to. And I find that a lot of the complaints that we are getting with encounters with the police, mm -hmm. wherever it is, mm -hmm. especially within your own property, mm -hmm. as you touched on, is more having to do with the conduct of the police rather than them having to go on your premise, do you find? Um, conduct goes both ways, you know. Yes. Because there are those instances where the police are guilty of coming without any kind of smooth or charm, but then equally there are those instances where they come smoothly and charmingly, but the persons receiving them are hostile. Okay. I mean, it's an automatic defense when they see the police. Um, they're not welcomed, and they are acting already in a deficit because you're not welcoming them. Yeah. So meeting a hostile environment, they are trained to do certain things and react a certain kind of way. Okay. Um, but if it is that they come with their same charm and the kindness that they are supposed to come with when they are doing non-hostile type of environments, then it would go smoothly. But there are those instances when they come and they, yeah. you have the reactions from the neighbors, you have the reactions from the persons themselves. I mean, it can be very intense and it is a balancing act that not many of them know how to balance. That's yeah. the truth. And I mean, we're in a time when, especially we see with our Western neighbors in America, they're having such hostile relations with their police officers. Mm -hmm. And we're in what an age that some people will call the next, the next phase of the revolution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these uh, evidence that's surfacing, mm -hmm. it comes from people having the smart technology mm -hmm. to film the conduct, right. to film the incident. Right. What is our law in terms of you wanting to film this um, on your smartphone we and whatever. We have not reached the point of getting to that detail in the law, but yeah. your phone is your property. Okay. And you have a right to your property. Yes. Um, if you are witnessing a certain event, you have all rights to take any f recording of that incident if you feel the need to. Um, it is not as easy for you to film when you are the person being searched, but if I am with you, for example, and police yeah. come and they conduct a search upon your person, then I can do what seems to be the trend now, which is to take a recording of the incident. Okay. And you have a right to that because it is your private property. And we have spoken to a couple people who have experienced hostile raids. Yes. <laughs> and um, sure. one of the comment was that the police officers, they come in and they, th this was, we're, we're speaking to the man mm -hmm. and he's saying um, he can understand them roughing him up as a big man, mm -hmm. but the way how they conducted their, themselves towards the children as well, mm -hmm. he says that the police officers basically tell him pan the wall and spread tell the children, do the same thing. Is that allowed? You're going into somebody's home, looking for something, probably suspecting the adults for doing something. Yeah. What, what are the, the, the kids, you know? Um, it shouldn't be, that's the truth. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with minors, and I say minors, persons less than 16 years of age. Okay. Um, you, you have a certain way that you should behave. Um, if it is, as you just indicated, a hostile environment. Yes. It may be that the police are just being precautious because you and I both know the realities of our world. Um, it's unfortunate that there are minors committing serious crimes. Yeah. So for an officer to come into a hostile environment with or without minors, they are already engaged on a level where they're at defense protect yourself at all costs kind of thing. So okay. it's unfortunate if it is that the minors do experience these things, but it's unfortunate that we live where we live right now and we have, like I said, minors committing serious, serious um, acts of violence, yeah. murder. You have so many children being charged for murder. So, I mean, it's a balancing act again. Okay. Um, but yeah. the norm, is that the manners should be put one side with a guardian or whoever it is that has been searched already okay. and taken to a side. Um, if it is that there's an arrest taking place, then the manners would go to the care of some other relative. And if there are no other relatives available, then they would call in the human services department so that they can send someone to act as a guardian for the children or the minor at the time of the 
the incident. And earlier you touched, and we just want a quick legal advice mm -hmm. because you said when the police officers approach a premise, they have to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. Are there any other things that they must do in terms of the whole approach to you for when they're you know, entering? entering? Yeah. They should let you know why they're entering. Okay. I mean, if it is that they just come upon your premises without even saying anything to you, then that's a violation because you should at least have the right to know what it is that's happening and why it is happening. Okay. So in addition to identifying themselves, they should at least give you the um, privilege and the, the right to know why it is that it's happening. They're being searched. Exactly. Okay, thank you, Leisha. Um, we have to go to a short commercial break, but once again, we invite you to join in the conversation by posting your comments or questions on our Facebook page or emailing us at info at colorblind.bz. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am your host, Khadija Usher, and I have here with me attorney Leisha Chung. So we had a very good introduction on police encounter when it comes to your property, your house. Um, we just want to touch on one more aspect of that mm -hmm. is when they actually find something in there. And if this is ammunition, uh -huh. for instance, we could go with ammunition. Well, we have had the occasion where, as we all have heard, the police rake and scrape and carry everybody. Everybody, right? everybody got all on the going station. down, right? <laughs> um, it's unfortunate that we all, and I say we all, meaning the persons who are on the premises at the time, have to go. But it would be hard for the police, um, when before the magistrate's court or any other judiciary, to explain why only one person has been charged in all of this. Even if you admit that you are the person in possession of the gun, you... During the raid. During the raid, right. You write a statement to that effect. Yeah. They will still charge everyone. They'll still take everybody. The, the reason why, uh -huh. because the simple truth, people are not trustworthy. Okay. There has been, and I have experienced it myself, where one person admits they're before the magistrate, and then they don't admit again. Suddenly they lost. They, they forced me to write a statement because if I didn't write that statement, I then my mother, right, my mother would have been charged and okay. my baby. Or, yes. yeah, so it changes mm -hmm. as opposed to having all four persons before the magistrate giving their testimony and before the magistrate saying what it is that they admit to. In yes. that instance, then it would be acceptable. But it's because of the lack of trust. In the same way that there are the lack of trust from one side, there will be the lack of trust from the other side. Yes. So to prevent any loopholes or to plug any gaps, they bring everyone before the magistrate. And in, at that point, you are ready to do what you came here to do, then you do it in the presence yeah. of the magistrate. Because as civilians, many times we don't see the other side of the investigation. No, no. I think the most knowledge we know about it, or at least I know about it, is from watching episodes of Law and Order. And, <laughs> and, 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 and we see how and <laughs> loopholes, lawyers right. find the lo loopholes, exactly. so it's necessary. It, that is one of the situations that the police are faced with when at magistrate's court. Someone will say at the point when the raid is being conducted, that, yo, boss, not for me. Okay. And by the time they reach in front of the magistrate, boss, they force me you know because if I never say it then I you know carry my mom my baby mom. Yeah, I mean so then now the police are left with that astonished look as if a deer was caught in the headline because they had this scripted and this was what it was supposed to be but it changed so yeah. it's unfortunate but that's the reason why and they're doing it. just a clarification in this instance if they if somebody owns up to it mm -hmm. but they still have to round up everybody we understand that they have to give a statement but do they have to lock them up everybody up the because charge is one where yeah they have to ammunition um, yeah it's unfortunate but yes and then in the morning they're taken to the magistrate's court and it can finish right there or it can go through the process of the trial yeah so it's unfortunate but yes we can we get into vehicles oh yes we because we have a lot of traffic stops around now 
and a lot of people are concerned that police officers are asking them things or asking them to do things which they're not sure if they're allowed to ask them or for them to do. Okay. When it comes to searching your vehicle, what is the procedure? What do you need? You need to tell me why you're searching my vehicle. Okay. It's my private property. I have a right to protect my property. If it is that you want to conduct a search on my vehicle, you need to tell me why it is that you want to conduct that search and the basis upon which you're making that, um, that, that challenge. So a warrant is still not necessary? Again, they come under the one thing where they want to just get into your vehicle with that guns and ammunition. Suspicion. Kind of, right. Reasonable suspicion. And even yes. if they say reasonable suspicion, they will have to, if, if, if they search a vehicle, you're not happy you have a right to go to the professional standards branch, which is formally internal affairs. I, yes, right. we, we know about internal affairs. Right. Yeah. professional standards branch. Um, and you can make a report on the incident. Okay. You do have a right. Please do not ever believe that you don't have a right. You have a right to voice your complaints and to make your issues heard. So please don't ever, ever believe that you don't have a right. Yes, because Honestly, from the time you started the segment to now, I think a lot of people did not still believe that the police have a lot more power than the citizen has. No, no. They're there they're for us. They work for us. Yeah. They're there to protect us. But at the same time, if they have been egregious in some act, they can be forced and they can be brought to challenge. Um, for example, if it is that you have been asked, all right, you're driving, and this has happened. You're driving, pull you over, your license up two days ago. Yes. They want to pay. Pay me your money, and I'll make this go away. You can either be a victim, or you can make something happen for yourself that is good for you and for us Belizeans as well. You can find some genius way to bring them to a location where you can have someone else record the exchange. Yes, while it's happening. While it is happening, mm -hmm. and as soon as it has taken place, you contact the professional standards branch and report it immediately with your video or whatever form of recording you have so that you can show them that this guy just extorted me for X amount of dollars because my license was up for two days. Yeah. And it has happened. Yes, yes. And police have been charged for extortion and they have been disciplined. It's quite so. interesting because it's a flip. Oftentimes we speak about the responsibility of law enforcement, of police, but we have to remember that as we citizens have, yes. we have a responsibility just right. as they have to clean up the exactly. streets, we have to clean up exactly. the people who we have in right. charge to. So you need to street. find a way to do your part. Um, you may feel pressured at that point in time, but find a way. There's always a way. I don't have it for me right now, boss. Let me go down the street for you and check my work and I'll get it from my workplace. Yeah. And at that point, you give someone the heads up, yo, I'm on my way, this is what's happening, get on the phone out. So use the same phone that you are entitled to because it's your property, use it for your own benefit and for your defense as well. And what would you advise somebody, I think you touched on it slightly mm -hmm. in terms of responding to the police. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a question that um, you pull up to a traffic stop again mm -hmm. and the police to question you, what are you going? And the person's just like, does he have the right to no. ask me my business? No. <laughs> no, he does not have the right to ask you your business. It is yours and you need not respond. Um, they can ask questions in relation to your vehicle in terms of license, insurance, and yeah. if it is that they have their own reasons and they have to explain to you what their reasons are, they can conduct a search. If you don't feel comfortable conducting a search right then and there, ask the officer if they could accompany you to the nearest police station so that they can do whatever it is that they want to do on the premises. So you don't have to divulge your life story. It's not a to requirement, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, they are entitled to set up the random um, checkpoints because there may be something happening in the neighborhood that we may not be aware of. Yes. So they do have a right, as annoying as it can be, <laughs> they do have a right. Yes, as you so. said, they're there to protect us. Right. 
I think that a lot of people, though, especially a particular demographic of the society right now, mm -hmm. would not share your sentiment. No, I understand because they get on my nerves sometimes. So it's like, <laughs> geez, I just passed someone from Mahogany Street and I have to check out and get from Vernon. Oh my yes. gosh. And yeah. I think that maybe you might not be a person who gets hassled half as much as other persons mm -hmm. who we have spoken to. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to the body searches now. Uh, people feel that the police are profiling and they do not know if this is right. Profiling is never right, no care by who. Whether or not it is your employer, or not it, it, profiling is never right. Um, and it is unfortunate that we are all victims of profiling. People look at me and presume certain things because of my profession. You get a presumption because of your profession. So profiling exists in all manner and it is the certain demographic as you refer to that feel more than us because they are subjected to more than you and I would be subjected to, but they have a right. If you feel like you've been violated, you make your complaints known. Internal affairs. Or professional standards branch professional as they're now called. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but it, you yeah. have an option. If you feel like you've been abused and you've been treated a certain kind of way, and even in those instances where there has been physical abuse, you have yes. a right. And if you don't want to go to professional standards branch, you can sue in your own personal capacity. You get your lawyer. You have your rights yeah. and you can enforce them. You just need to know what they are and how best to enforce them. Yeah. Get advice. I'm glad you're in with that. I'm glad you're <laughs> <laughs> I would just so. have to go to one more commercial break, but we'll be right back. And again, we encourage you to follow us on our Facebook page. Hi, welcome back to Know Your Rights. We thank you for your questions and comments. We have selected two of your questions to ask our guest attorney. Our first question is from Javier. Please explain searches with and without a warrant on person, vehicle, and home. Okay, Javier. Um, well, we had already started, well, we started with the warrants on the home. Um, warrants with I guess in relation to your home, as I indicated, there's no need for a warrant when it is that they are entering on the suspicion that there's a gun or ammunition on the property. Yes. yes. Um, but there will be a need for any other purpose. And as I indicated before, you need to identify who you are talking with. You have the right to ask questions and ask persons' names mm -hmm. because you need to take a record for yourself. Um, if it is that the police come upon your premises without a warrant, more than likely it's because they're looking for guns and ammunition. Okay. Um, any other situation, it would be the same. Yeah. In relation to your vehicle, mm -hmm. they don't have the right to just randomly search. Again, I know it is repetitive, but it is what the umbrella that they cover themselves yes. with, which is the guns and ammunition, to justify why they're going in. They're going in. Yeah. Um, but if you are not content with that, explanation that reasonable suspicion how can you consider it to be reasonable when you have not even identified why and who or how you can ask questions after the fact unfortunately okay um, in relation to your person uh, <laughs> I say because yes. I don't know if they can ever have a warrant to search your person if you're entering a public location, they can do the searches yes. um, for the sake of prevention of crime to ensure that you're not carrying any illegal Something that could substance harm or yeah. weapons of that court. Yeah. Um, I have had this situation where a young lady didn't feel too correct with a police, a male police officer searching her and she has a right because they're not supposed to be the ones to conduct searches. They could pat down, mm -hmm. the cursory pat Okay. to feel for any weapons of that type. Yeah. But um, in terms of the searches where they have to get very detailed, um, it should, it be, should a female, be a female, a female officer. officer. Right. So searches without a warrant are always under the umbrella of guns and ammunition. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Um, in any other situation, there should be a warrant present and the reasons for entering the premises, the vehicle, or even touching your purse. You know? And would it go under the principle that give respect, get respect? How it essentially, should be, essentially, ideally. Essentially, so that I hope answers Javier's question. <laughs> and we could go to our second question. Mm -hmm. The second question is from Daniel. Some of the police themselves <laughs> don't know their rights, so how can they execute their job properly? <laughs> good one, Daniel, good one, good one. Um, they are supposed to know. I say supposed because they go through training. Um, but like any other person entering a new job, they learn as they go along. Um, they learn well by experience, but it's sometimes not the best teacher because they may learn the wrong things. Um, they too are equipped with the laws. They know that it is available to them and they have their own legal counsel who can guide them because yes. they do have their own in-house attorney who his responsibility is to guide them and give them direction. Okay. So I take the point that yeah. some of them don't even know their own, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that they don't have the material available. It doesn't mean that they don't have the resources available to them. It doesn't mean that they don't have the personnel available to them. Okay. You have senior commanding officers who learn and who know. Mm -hmm. And it is not a problem for any junior, irrespective of what capacity they're in, irrespective of what job they're in, to ask the senior for guidance. I think that how a good response we could actually give Daniel is that if they don't know, at least you need to know Daniel. At least, And that's yes. why I at the yes. have to watch yes. the show. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, there is that, there is that. But in the event that they don't know, then, like I said, they have the resources available. They can take advantage of what they have as well, too. So that, I think, and I hope, answers Daniel's question. And one final thought, Leisha. When it comes to you're taken to the police station, you're in custody, mm -hmm. a lot of people always ask, what am I entitled to? The traditional one phone call on the pay phone, how, what, what is, how you work? <laughs> you are always entitled to communication with either a family member or your attorney. Um, it can be direct communication, meaning that they are there with you, yes. or you can make a call in the event that you have been detained in your own, without anyone around. So you are without delay entitled to that. So it is a right that you have, and you need to learn to exercise your rights. <laughs> so it's good to know your rights. <laughs> Thank you, Leisha. And unfortunately, we have no. come to the end of our oh. show for All tonight. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Leisha, for joining us and My providing pleasure. us with so much information on tonight's topic. I am sure that the viewers learned a lot. Know Your Rights will be back next Monday at 8 p.m. with attorney Naima Barrow, who will discuss your rights pertaining to child support, spousal maintenance, and divorce. Thank you for watching and see you next Monday for another episode of Know Your Rights. Good night.